morning and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to do a deep dive into our Commodity View Market Information Desktop Solution, which you see on the screen in front of you today. Commodity View is a fully browser-based solution. And what that means for you is that there is no software to download, no software to install. You simply go to a URL, log in with your credentials provided, and you're ready to go. The other nice thing about a web-based solution is that whatever you create on your desktop, as far as displays and other information, all that is available to you anywhere else you log in. That might be on a home PC, that might be uh, on the road on a different PC, or even on your tablet or mobile device. So that makes it a, a very versatile and portable solution. When you set up a commodity view, you'll notice you have all of these tabs along the bottom of the screen. These tabs can be uh, customized any way you like. They can be color coded. Uh, you, can, you can name them according to the content that you have on, on that screen. And you can have as few or as many tabs as you like to set up a workspace that is convenient and, and works well with your workflow. So that's kind of area number one of the configuration of, of the product. Uh, kind of going around the horn here, you can see over in the right hand corner, I've got a little box with my login information. If I click on that, you can see that it opens up and I've got a number of other uh, contacts within Commodity View that I can communicate with. And so it's a, an embedded messaging system right within Commodity View. Um, it's also available to communicate with users of our marketplace producer app. So if you're, let's say, a merchandiser and you're using Commodity View to, to manage your, your risk and, and watch the markets and, and uh, settle contracts and such, um, at the same time, in the same platform, you can communicate with any of your uh, producers that are on your marketplace app right through the, right through the uh, product. Coming around further up in the top right hand corner, you can see a number of icons here. The far right one is the settings wheel. And if you go through here, you can see all the different uh, kind of general or global settings um, that you can set up. Uh, some are language, so there's different languages available. There's uh, different presentation modes that you can use where the, the tabs at the bottom will scroll through uh, every, every few seconds. Uh, you can set your own default symbols, your trading preferences on the trading screen, um, the theme, the color theme. So right now there's four. We're adding a couple of more uh, themes right now. Um, I like the dark graphite, but you can also use uh, a light background as well, which is nice if you're doing a lot of printing or, or something like that of, of charts and quotes and things. Uh, the printout works better if you're using a light mode. And then this is also where you configure your, your live trading. So a number of things to, uh, to look at and, and get familiar with under the settings wheel. The next icon is the alerts icon. So you can very easily set up your own alerts. Just come in and hit create new alert. Choose your symbol. Let's see, I want to set an alert on corn, these corn to be specific. We'll choose that. You can do an alert type. And an alert price. So let's say you want to be uh, greater than five dollars on your alert. You can enter any notes. Sell here and save that alert. Okay, and there is my alert. You see it just triggered because I set it at five. The market said like five twelve, so it triggered. Um, I get an on-screen alert, and I also uh, can set it up so that I get a email or text alert as well when that is triggered. If I reset it, I can just hit reset, and there it triggered again. You can set up uh, your, your profile here, time zone settings, and things like that. Uh, the fourth icon from the right is probably uh, one of the most important. And that is our gallery pages. So our gallery pages are about three dozen workspaces that we have pre-configured for you. Uh, and those are stored. And all you have to do to bring those into your workspace is just find the one that you're interested in. It fits uh, your, your requirements. Double click on it, 
and that will bring it right into your workspace as another one of these tabs down at the bottom. So take a look through here. It's a great way to get started, a good onboarding tool for you as well. Uh, just really, really helps get your workspaces set up. Once they're in, you can always modify it uh, you know, to your needs if, if you want to you know, uh, personalize it a bit. Um, if it looks like it's not one you need after you get it loaded, just simply delete it. Okay, and then the last one uh, is just some uh, updates uh, on the project. So if you just click on the flag, you get all the latest uh, changes and updates and announcements uh, that we have available. Okay, continuing around, uh, the main menu is up in the upper left-hand corner. And you can see up here that you've got quotes and different template quote boards that are available. There's a cash price window that helps you uh, find and, and uh, bring up all of our cash prices, which we'll see in a little bit. Uh, there's a charting menu, and here you can do not just regular charts like you see in the upper right-hand corner, but you can do forward curves uh, and seasonal charts. You can also bring up a tabular time series of the data as well. Then there's news and reports, options. There's a couple of different options displays that we'll look through. There are maps. And so we'll, we'll look at those when we move to the next tab. Uh, tons of information and content uh, available geospatially in our mapping engine. Uh, and some of them you can look at not only on a geospatial basis, but on a time series basis at the same time on the same, same display. Then there is our, our trading functionality. So you can set up a DOM trader and order ticket positions and so on. Match uh, is our embedded physical grain transaction solution. Uh, so if you're a merchandiser, again, um, right within Commodity View, you can accept uh, offers and manage your full offer deck uh, right through Commodity View and then even e-sign contracts right within the application and send, send those contracts out to producers for, for their signature. Under more, there's a, a dozen or more uh, additional displays, everything from custom calculators to weather maps, uh, some things that are specific to uh, equities, and then some technical analysis, um, and under other things like time and sales and economic calendar. So a good one to kind of explore and, and see what other tools are available uh, through, through that menu as well. And then finally, uh, under help, uh, this is an area where you can download the Commodity View desktop. And what that is, is a, a different mode that you can operate in whereby it strips out all of the browser tabs so you don't see those. It provides a launch icon for you so you can launch the application right from your desktop or taskbar. Um, and then uh, it also does a, a really nice job of uh, natively managing multiple work, work uh, monitors. So if you want to spread your workspaces across two, three, four, or five monitors, the desktop mode is definitely the way to go. There's also a link to the Commodity View Excel. If you have um, Commodity View Pro, the Commodity View Excel is included in that. And if you just click here, that will take you out to a page to download uh, that Excel. And we'll take a look at that uh, as well in a few minutes. Through here, you can also contact support and submit, submit support tickets. There's a team viewer uh, application so that if we need to log into your desktop and see exactly what's going on, if you, you're having questions or, or need some help on something, uh, if you download that, uh, then we can share your desktop and, and show you exactly what's, what's going on. Uh, and then there's uh, help as well. Okay, very good. Um, on, when, I, when I clicked on that help, I'll uh, just show you here. Uh, it opened up a, a new browser. Um, our entire online uh, quick start and, and getting started uh, guide. So everything you want to know about Commodity View uh, is available online just by clicking help uh, within the application. Again, that's right, right there. Okay, let's take a look at our first tab here. Uh, this one I've set up is called Egg Market Overview. Uh, when you first launch Commodity View, you will have something similar uh, to this tab. I think it's named the same. I've made changes to mine over time, but it, it should be very similar in layout and, and functionality. 
Um, one thing I want to note is that when you're in a, a page tab like a market overview, you can lay this these tabs out any way that uh, you like. So if, if you want uh, kind of a two by two display with, with four displays like I have here, you can do that. If you want to have a single display for say a, a you know, very large tab to do you know long-term trend analysis or something like that, that's available as well. Uh, the nice thing is that if you have four, five, six displays in one screen, at any time you can maximize that as I did with this chart, and then just hit that same maximize button again and it drops it right back where, where you had it. So there's no issues with you know displays hiding behind other displays or minimized displays that you can't find or anything like that. Everything always has its place. Okay, up in the upper left hand corner are our uh, quote board. So here we've got a, a grain score board and you can see I've got another layer of tabs. So down here I've got my page tabs, but up here I've got tabs that are just specific to this one window. So we've got grains, behind that I put soft commodities, energies, and so on. Okay, so I go back to grains. Uh, the quote board, again, you can set up uh, as you like. Um, this kind of started from our grains template, but you can lay it out if you want just a quote board with just corn or just soybeans or corn and soybeans. You can certainly do that as well. Uh, and I'll show you how to create a custom quote board. So in this particular case, we've got all of our quotes. We've got a uh, label or, or header rows in between each one to break them down kind of nicely. The uh, management of your quote board is very much like Excel. So if you want to change the width of a column, just find the divider between the columns and drag it where you need it. You can move groups of commodities around. So if I just shift and select all of the soybeans, I can just drag those right to the top. So now my whole group of soybeans is up at the top. I can also come over to columns and turn on and off any columns that I require. And you can see here, there's a couple of dozen or more to choose from. I can do that same thing with the symbols. So if I wanna change any of my symbols, I can just come in and X out uh, any of those. I can move symbols around and so on. Um, the other thing I wanna show you here under symbols is that you see the ZS star one, star two, star three. Those are first month, second month, third month, and so on. So this is showing you that the way that they were added to the quote board was using these relative descriptors, so ZS star one. What's nice about that is when November beans expire, everything will move up one and it'll add another row at the bottom. So you'll always have, you know, say the latest uh, five or, or what have you. Contacts, whatever you, whatever you choose. Okay, excellent. Uh, you can also, from here, uh, export uh, data. So if you go to export and you hit uh, Excel Dynamic RTD, this will create in Excel a quote board that looks just like this. And those prices will update in Excel when the markets are open in real time. Uh, you can also do that same thing, and, and I'll show you how to do this because it, it's really better functionality, but you can do that same thing working right in Excel using the add-in, and, and we'll see that in a few minutes as well. Um, you can also create functions or expressions if you want to do spreads, for example, um, and you can do those in several places in the application, whether it's in quote boards and charts and seasonal charts and forward curves. So if I come in and I go to the expressions, and let's say I want to select a popular spread like a soybean crush spread, there's my formula. And you can kind of use this to see what the nomenclature has to be. But uh, essentially, you have to use the squiggly or bookmark brackets um, around each symbol. And then you can use standard parentheses for your math operators. And you can build these expressions as you know, simple as you want, anything from just a simple calendar spread up to a uh, you know, sugar premium or a, a canola soybeans crush or, or what have you. So I'm just gonna choose the soybean crush spread and hit apply. And you can see that added it down here at the bottom of my, my quote board. And I think it's not showing there because I already have one right here. 
So let's we'll remove this one. You can see how I did that. Just right click and delete, and there it is. And there's the, the value of that soybean crush today. Okay, so that's expression. So that's pretty much everything about the quote board. Um, if you go to settings, you can see that you can set uh, different modes. So when a cell updates, um, it will uh, flash and begin updates. Uh, you can set grid lines or turn grid lines off, and you can change the, the heat map or the color indicator of what's up and what's down for the day. Uh, so you can do the whole background, you can do just the row text, or the one I like is just the change, the percent change here. So again, just, just to help you, you know, quickly find uh, what you're looking for, a little, a little bit extra color coding to, to make it obvious what's up, what's down for the day. Okay, the next thing I want to show you, go back up to say November soybeans here, um, is that each of these displays can be linked together. So as, as I was clicking through the quote board, you probably saw my charts updating, my spread matrix updating, and, and other things. Um, all you have to do to link these displays together is go to the chain link icon in the upper right hand corner, pick a color, in this case I pick green, and then any other display that you use that same color those are going to be linked. So now if I come and I click on say December corn, I have a December corn seasonal chart, I have a December corn chart, I've got corn uh, spread matrices and so on. It works with options as well. So here you can see my options display is linked. I hit click on these corn, there's my these corn options as well. So very, very uh, handy tool to get used to and, and be able to link each of those displays together. Okay, as we go to the upper right hand corner, I'm going to talk a little bit about the charts. Uh, it's a very professional uh, level charting program. Um, tons and tons of studies, available studies. You can see that we've got probably, you know, 70 or 80 different studies available for you to use with the technical uh, analysts in the, in the group. Um, in the first group of studies, there are overlay studies like, say, Bollinger Bands. All I have to do is just click on it and it adds it to the chart. As I scroll down further, there is another group of studies that are standalone or second stack studies. And these are going to be things like uh, stochastics and RSIs and MACDs and so on. So again, if I just click, there's my MACD. If I want to eliminate any of those, let's say I want to get rid of the implied ball, I just click on the X and it's gone. If I want to change any of the parameters of the studies, I can just come into studies and let's say I want to go to stochastics. Here I can choose, uh, change the, uh, the periods of the stochastics and the smoothing, and then pick different colors as well. And I can also shut off certain lines. So if I only want to see uh, the percent D, I can just turn off the percent K and so on. Okay, to navigate the charts, uh, to scroll around, just left click anywhere in the chart and drag it. So if you want to move it back so you've got some room out in front of your chart, just drag it left, left click in this chart, drag it back to see more history, and so on. To compress it, you can just do the same thing on the axis. So left click on the x-axis, drag right to compress, drag left to expand. And then on the y-axis, same thing, just left click and drag it up or down. And so that way you can really zoom into you know, any of the particular areas of the chart that you want to see in a little bit more detail. Uh, the different types of charts, if I, or uh, not different types, different intervals of charts. If I come to the drop down here where it says daily nearest, you can see that I've got thick charts, I've got custom interday charts, I've got seconds per bar charts, all the different minute intervals, uh, days or dates per bar, and so on and so on. Um, I also have two types of continuation charts that are just a click away. Um, one is daily nearest, which is what you might be used to as your kind of your standard uh, continuous charts or continuation chart. Um, and that's going to concatenate all the nearby contracts together going back in time. So, you know, currently we're in DS. As we scroll back in time, we're going to hit, uh, you know, September and July and, and so on as we go back. If I change that to daily continue, 
it's going to be very similar, except that it will hold the DEES contract all the way back to the last year when DEES in 2020 was the was the prom month contract. And then you know, hold it all the way back to 2019 and so on. So you'll be looking at all the DEES contracts or whichever contract you bring up. If you want to see all the you know, May contracts concatenated together, bring up May, choose daily continue or weekly continue or monthly continue, and that's what you'll have. Okay, uh, on the drawing tools, if you uh, just go to the drawing tool drop down, you can see there's there's trend lines and rays. Uh, you can annotate with with text and shapes and so on. Uh, there's uh, retracements, scan fans, Fibonacci's, and so on and so on. If I want to apply a trend line, for example, I just click on trend line. I go to where I want to start it, and I left click to start, and I hold that left click. Drag it over to where I want to end that trend line and release. Now, what's nice is these will automatically snap to the element that you are closest to. So if you if you want to snap it to the high, just get close to the high and it'll automatically snap there. You don't have to go into a dialog box and, and set it to snap to any particular parameter. That's the drawing tools. Uh, different types of charts. Right now we're in a candlestick. You can do hollow candlesticks. You can do kind of your standard bar chart. You can do line charts or area charts. So all, all available and, and again, just to click away. You can do comparison charts. So otherwise maybe called overlays. And so just bring up any, any contract and then go to compare. And you can add another instrument in here. It doesn't have to be a future. It can be cash prices, like this is our commodity national uh, corn price index, the, the nearby. Um, so you can add that, uh, or you could add fundamental data, and I'll show you in a minute how you can look at fundamental data or say CFTC data versus um, other items uh, like price, for example. So the overlay charts are, are very, very powerful. Um, and then expressions. I showed you the expressions earlier uh, in the quote board. Same idea here, uh, but you can see that you, know, you can see that full history of, of what that uh, soybean crush, for example, looks like. Okay, so that's charting. Uh, coming down the line here a little bit, I'm going to just go to news. For the news, um, again, just go to the menu, either up in the upper left hand corner and select news, or you can hit the plus sign and select news from there. Once you do, you're going to get a list of, of headlines coming through like this. And if you go to feeds, you can see all the different feeds that you can select from. You can select them all and, and have one you know, big uh, news feed that's, that's coming through with all the headlines. Or you can narrow that down to just specific uh, providers uh, like Associated Press if you're looking for general and economic news, um, our own commodity newswires uh, if you're looking for uh, our, our own proprietary uh, contributors that, that provide uh, information and content or USDA reports and things like that. Uh, for deeper market analysis, you can choose Dow Jones and so on. So in this case, you can see I've, I've choose Dow Jones. I color coded it, which is kind of nice in case you have multiple uh, news wires in a single feed here or single display. Um, but in this case, I just have Dow Jones. Once done, once you uh, selected the feeds that you want to see, you can then just come in and put in keywords. So here I've got China hogs with a space in between, which means it's going to be looking for China and hogs. Both, both things will have to be available in the story. If I do chi China comma hogs, <clears throat> it's going to look for one or the other. And we'll display those uh, news stories that have uh, either China or hogs in the story. So in this case, we have China hogs. If I go to my next tab, you can see here, I've got wheat or oats. So either one will show up. Um, you know, great, great tool to use if you just wanna watch for USDA reports or specifically if you wanna watch for WASD, you can search just on WASD and it'll filter out everything else and show you just those stories that are either the WASD report or commentary and analysis around the WASD report. 
the other part of news is reports. And under the reports, which you'll find if you go to news and reports, um, are a number of articles, reports, stories um, that are better seen in their native PDF format. Uh, something like the Drill Monitor, for example, that you see here. So to use this, just bring up the reports display, go to source. Right now we're on USDA. We'll go to report, and let's say we want to see the weekly uh, weather report, which gives you global information on all, of, all the uh, growing regions. We'll click on that. And then you can see I've got the full weekly weather report from USDA available here. And you can see that this isn't really something that you would want to view uh, in a text-based scrolling uh, headline news feed, uh, but it works great in, in this uh, news reports. And there's other sources there. Uh, there's our own commodity um, reports, our own proprietary reports that we produce. And you can see, you can come in and say you want to see the International Grains Report. And then you can also choose the date. So right now we're seeing the current one, but if I want to go back a week, I can go back and pull that up as well. So if I want to look and see how things have changed uh, over time, I can do that too. So that's the reports. Uh, again, a, a very nice tool to see more uh, rich graphics uh, type of reports. Okay, in the lower left-hand corner, uh, another group of displays. Uh, here, primarily seasonal and forward curves. So here's a, a seasonal chart. Again, this is linked, you can see it's green, uh, to the quote board above. So if I wanna see, let's say, a seasonal chart on coffee, I can just click on coffee, and there's my seasonal report on coffee. Going back to grains, say I want to see it on soybeans, just click on soybeans. Super easy to bring up a seasonal chart. I can go into years back and choose which years I want to look at. So in this case, I looked at seven or eight years uh, consecutively, and then I jumped back to 2008 because the season, the season started out pretty similar to 2008. And so you can overlay all of those. Uh, there's a legend on the left-hand side as to which colors are which years. The green is always the average. And so you can see the average coming through here. You can also go to the settings wheel and you can choose to hide the different years. Keep them in the average, but just hide them to kind of clean up the display. Maybe you only want to look at this year, last year, and the average of 10 years. So you can do that. So it'll, it'll turn them off visually, but they're still included in, in the average price, which is down here. In here, you can also set uh, different colors and different widths. So let's say we want to bold the, uh, the average. We can do that too. Okay. You can also do seasonal charts on cash prices, on fundamental data. Um, even on uh, spreads. So if I come into a new seasonal chart, uh, here again is that uh, soybean crush spread. And so you can see the, the seasonal history of the soybean crush, again, with the average uh, in the green line. So those expressions are, are very powerful tools that you can use throughout the application. Forward curves uh, are also available. Again, it's a forward curve on, on uh, corn. For example, here, I don't have this one linked. So if I don't have a link, I just put in a root symbol and, and get my forward curve. If I do have a link, I'll go to green. Again, I can just come down here to say meal and see the forward curve on the soybean meal. Um, I can have multiple forward curves. So the, the blue line is today's forward curve. The green line uh, is back 21 days ago. I can see right here. So that's what it looked like 21 days ago. So you can see how it shifted and how the slope has somewhat changed uh, over that time as well. To do that, I can just come into curves, add a new curve, select the date that I want to see. And maybe I want to go back to August and see what it looked like in August and hit add. And now I've got three forward curves. We have snapshots at different periods in time. 
Okay, so that's the quotes, the charts and news and reports, the seasonal charts and the forward curves. Over in the right hand corner, I've got a spread matrix. Uh, just a real nice quick way to see the spread between uh, different contract months. So let's maybe come over here and go back to soybeans. And I can come down and say, okay, what's the spread between, say, November soybeans and next May? And you can see it's a positive 30 cents. And down if I want to see what, what the spread is between May and July next year, seven and a quarter cents. So just a real nice quick reference uh, spread matrix, similar to the old mileage charts that you may remember. There are also special the uh, calculators like a soybean crush calculator there's a livestock crush calculator and a sugar premium uh, these simply take the components of that crush so the beans the meal and the oil uh, they plot out the full forward curve of those in a graph in a tabular format and then calculate the value of the meal the value of the oil the crush margin and the percent oil that you got out of that, that crush and again, those are covered across the full, full forward curve of each of those legs of the crush. There's a, a cost of carry calculator, which is a, another nice way of look, looking at forward curves, if you will. The market carry would be the forward curve, in this case, corn. The second line is the cost of carry, which is your physical uh, cost of carrying that grain from month to month to month. And that can be configured based on storage cost and cost of money or interest rate. And then the third line is the percent of full carry that the market covers. And there you see we've got a positive carry here and then it turns negative as we go into 03. But this is finally positive. It was, uh, it had not been for a long time. Okay, similar uh, livestock crush, sugar premium for the soft traders out there. And then options and options I want to spend a, a little extra time on uh, because I, I think it's a, a really powerful, really easy to use uh, options module. Again, it can be linked to the quote board. So in this case, we're on November beans, we're on November beans and the options. So really easy. You don't have to know any options symbology. You don't have to enter an underline. Just click on your quote board and it will update. So let's say I come down to these corn. And see everything else updated and there's my beast corn options what's well, nice about this display and i'm just going to blow it up to, to full screen is that from there it's all point and click if i want to look at a different set of expirations i can just come to my expiration drop down and let's say i want to look at the options from next july just click on july and there's my july options Similarly, if I want to see the short dated new crop options, so let's say I want to look at July, but the new crop option, there we go. So this is the July expirations calculated off the December underline, as you can see up here. And then the same thing on things like calendar spread options and so on. So all of your options associated with corn are available via this simple drop down here. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to, well, let's say, these options. And from here, uh, I can change the views. So right now we're in a, in a custom view, and I'll come back to that in a minute. If I go to quote, the quote view, you can see for my entire options chain, I get the bid, the ask, the change, and the last. If I come down to intraday, I'm going to get the high, low, change, and last. If I go to the analysis, I have the last price, the implied ball, and all the Greeks. And then if I go to custom, I can basically start from scratch and build my own. Or I can go to quote, and let's say I got bid and ask, what if I want to add high and low to that? So I can just go to the view. I'm in the quote view. I can just come down here and click high and low. So now I have high, low, bid, ask, change, last. And so I, I essentially combined the quote display and the intraday display in one. And there's all kinds of other fields I can add as well. But you can see now I automatically am in a custom display because I configured that to my own liking. Uh, the other really slick thing about this uh, display 
is that I can chart the history of any of these options with just a couple of clicks. So if I, I come down, let's say I want to chart the at the money put for December corn or in December corn, I come down to the at the money, which is highlighted in blue. I go to the put side and I right click on the last price and I hit chart. And there's my chart of that particular option. I didn't have to know any option symbology at all. It's shown here, which I can key in if, if I so desire. But all I have to do is point and click to, to get here. I don't have to do anything else. I don't need to know any option symbology or, or anything like that. So a, a very, very nice uh, options uh, tool there as well. There's one more options display called the option strike display. And you can see here, rather than getting a single month of options, um, I get all of the all of the months across the top, and then I get the strike range down the left hand side, and then calls and puts are shown side by side. Now in the fields, it comes up as price and change, but I can go up to field selection. Let's say I want to see the price and implied vol. I just hit the implied vol. I got price and implied vol across that whole group of, of options. I can also chart uh, the Greeks and applied ball and thing like that. So if I go to chart type and I come down here, let's say I want to chart the open interest. Now this is going to be linked to the month above. So if I go to DIS, I'm going to see the volume and open interest on DIS. If I go out to next May, there it is for May. I can see where that volume and open interest falls across that strike range as well. I come back to chart type. Let's say I want to see the deltas. There's my deltas for May, there's my deltas for December, and so on. Okay, so that's the, the options module. I'm going to switch tabs here and go over to some examples with the maps. We'll let this just fill in for a second here. So there's a lot of different information uh, available within the maps and if you bring up the maps which you do by just clicking on it in the menu up on top and you go to layers there's kind of a navigation tool here to to add uh, different pieces of content whether that's you know our cash bid prices or proprietary indexes or yield forecasts uh, drought monitor and so on and then there's also under commodity stats there's all the USDA data. So you can look at crop progress reports, condition reports, and so on on a geospatial basis. In this particular example, you can see we have our grain price indexes and our cash grain bids turned on. So our cash grain bids we collect from about 4,000 uh, buying locations across the US uh, and Canada. Um, those are all segregated by type of facility. So if I go into cash grain bids, I can look at all the bids. I can look just, uh, say, the river terminals. I can look just at ethanol plants and so on. So I can really slice and dice this data uh, by commodity as well as by facility type. Go back to all. Uh, now, on the map that you're seeing currently, the locations are shown as blue dots. The green dots are just aggregated locations because of the zoom level that I'm at. So if I zoom in, you can see I get more and more individual locations until I have all individual locations. Then I can just select one, left click on it, and I can see who that is and what they're currently bidding for. So here's Agriway Partners in Burlington, Iowa. You can see they're currently bidding for corn out to April of 2022. Each of those deliveries and what features they're tying that to, their current basis and their resultant cash price. And so I can do that for any of the 4,000 locations that are available. I can also chart the history. So if I want to see the history of say their December cash price, I just click on the icon under price. It looks like a chart. And there's the chart of their history. I might want to look at that as the line chart. And there's that cash price in, in graphical form looking at the history. Okay, behind those individual locations, you can see a heat map uh, county by county. So those are our county level price and basis indexes. In this case, we're looking at basis. 
color coded against the, the basis level that you see down here at the bottom. And so if I come back to layers, I can go to our grain price indexes and see we're looking at corn. If I want to look at soybeans, I can just grab soybeans and that will repopulate for soybeans. I can also look at that um, on rather than a county by county basis, I can look at it at the CRD level, the state level, or a national level. And we'll leave it at county for now. Um, I can also, and this, this is really unique, uh, is I can come in and I can look at what does that heat map look like for different delivery periods. So right now we're in October. If I come out, I want to look at what does that heat map look like for December delivery? You can see that changing. Or maybe I want to go all the way out to next May. What does that heat map look like? Or March. Okay, if I want to swap it over to corn or wheat, I'll just come in and choose the commodity that I want to look at. And so you can see it's a you know a very powerful tool to take all of that cash data that we, we have available and really slice it and dice it on a geospatial basis and then uh, on a delivery or time series basis as well. There are other uh, layers available, like our yield forecast. This is our yield forecast for, for corn. Um, again, you can come in and see how that looks for uh, different time periods. So if I want to look at our yield forecast, product production yield forecast, we're looking at corn, Forecast type is the yield at the county level. And then I can choose a start point. So right now we're looking at starting in, in June. And then I can animate that display over the course of the season. And I can see how our proprietary yield forecasts change from the start of the season through to the end of the season or any point in time that I choose. And then there's other items like crop condition reports, crop progress reports, inventory, on-farm, off-farm storage, and, and so on and so on. You can see the yield forecasts and price and basis indexes and in, uh, in, in display like a quote board and charts as well. There's international cash data available. Um, so we have about 3,000 data points uh, globally that cover uh, grains, softs, livestock and dairy, uh, and freight rates as well, um, all across the world, all the major import-export uh, terminals, whether it's here in the U.S., South America, Australia, uh, Black Sea, Europe, and so on, uh, all available along with history. So you can see there's uh, different veg oils, wheat, barley, and corn, and maize and so on and so on. So a very, very global uh, approach to the, the cash data as well. I mentioned earlier that you can uh, do overlays with things like CFTC data. So here we're looking at the price of corn versus the different positions that the CFTC reports on. When I look up here, we're looking at the non-commercials, so the speculators and their net positions. If I want to see what the commercial net position is, I just click here. I still have the corn price available, and now I can see it versus the commercials. Click on non-commercials, there's the non-commercials versus price. And I, again, I can do that with CFTC data, I can do it with crop uh, yield forecast versus price, anything like that that I need to do. Okay, I want to show you the Excel add-in. I'm just going to open up the new blank screen. Now, when you uh, click on the help menu item in Commodity View and download the Excel add-in, you're going to see a menu item at the top called Commodity View. When you click on that, you can log in using your normal Commodity View credentials. And you can use the Excel add-in with uh, Commodity View at the same time, or you can use it completely independently. Once you log in, you're going to see a series of icons on the left-hand side are quotes, time series, charts, and options. And if I go to quotes, just click on that. 
you're going to get a dialog box. This is the same simple search mechanism that's available uh, in Commodity View. So I can either just start typing the symbol, like ZC, and I can see all the symbols that I've built. So there's East Corn, March, May, July, September, and December, for example. I can choose my fields. A lot of fields to choose from. Uh, right now we're looking at the name, last, and change. Maybe we want to add percent change. Open high low to that. We can move those around. So if I want open first, we can do that. And then just hit insert. And there's my real time price links into Excel for those commodities that I, I selected. You can also, rather than just start typing the symbol, if you go to the magnifying glass, you can see a list of different types of information here. And if I come to bar chart and go to egg, and I can see all the different data sets that we have available, including our grain bids, um, our indexes, our yield forecasts, and so on, all available within Excel to do a further analysis there. Fundamental data, and so on and so on. So with all the data that you need or would need access to, you can find uh, through this drill down mechanism or through the search up on top. Similarly, you, know, you can come into time series and you can choose a couple of symbols here. Let's do uh, corn and we'll do a soybean. So we'll do these corn and November soybeans. Uh, we, again, you can choose your symbols. I'll do a, a daily uh, interval, but I'm going to do a continuous. So let's do a daily uh, nearest. We're going to roll those on expiration and go descending. I'm going to choose, say, the last 5,000 bars, where I can pick a, a fixed date range, but I'm just going to use the last 5,000 bars. And then I hit insert, and there's my historical data within Excel. And you can see the symbol, it's Dece, and then September, and then July, and so on. So we're getting a continuous chart uh, right within Excel, or continuous tabular data within Excel. And that's really the Excel add -in. Uh, the, the chart uh, is very much the same as the historical data. The options, you can essentially rebuild an options display uh, right within Excel using the same mechanisms that we, we just saw. So the, the Excel add-in is a very, very powerful tool uh, to bring that data into Excel and do further analysis there. So that's all we have time for today. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to learn more about uh, Commodity View. Uh, and if you would uh, like a trial, just uh, reach out to commodity at barchart.com, that's C-M-D-T-Y at barchart.com, and we'll get you set up. Or you can go to barchart.com slash commodity, navigate to the trading page, and download your own uh, trial and register as well. Okay, again, thank you very much, and have a great day.